Hello, this is Cheryl, Cheryl from Abstract Art, and this is a painting that I created. I actually did it within a time frame, a time frame of around 30 minutes. And I used only handmade tools that I made myself. And the reason why I did this is I was challenged to create a piece of art based on my intuition, where I've been, and just basically how events in my life have um, affected me. And for some reason, I've been a homegrown gal and I am an entrepreneur and I just tackle everything. The moment I get up in the morning, it's go, I get out of bed, no matter how I feel or how achy I am, I just go. And I think that creating tools that I made myself with my own hands and then creating a painting with those tools is just a representation of my entire life. So without further ado, let's get into the video and I'm going to show you how I made this painting. And I hope you enjoy it. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, I hope to keep doing more and more pieces of art like this. First of all, I have sped some of this video up to be able to put this on a challenge site that I did which doesn't affect what you see when I'm painting. So I'm just kind of like laying out tools that I've made and I'll put all the descriptions below and um, because I'm not going to describe everything while we're going through here so I'll put some of the descriptions below. I start the page by just putting wet water on the watercolor paper. This is an 18 by 24 inch Strathmore uh, paper and I'll put the um, weight below. So I'm just putting water on it. I don't always add water, but I don't know, for some reason I just felt like water because I just came back from visiting my family down at the beach and water has been on my mind because I'm a city girl and I love the beach and um, I could be in the water any time of the day. This is a sponge that I added a rubber band to and the paint is actually just Golden's Black uh, High Flow um, paint. And I love the way it just kind of like, you know, did its own thing on the paper. And you'll see me dab up some of that water later because I love the look of dabbing um, the water up um, with um, either a baby wipe or a paper towel. There I'm using a stick that I just got from the garden and I'm dipping that in some Golden's, um, it, not, maybe, I think it's Indian yellow or yellow medium, just any colors you want. The colors don't really matter. The, um, the paint, um, like this is, this is not a high flow, it's just a regular uh, Golden's uh, fluid acrylic. I think that matters to you. I'm grabbing a tube there where I've just added uh, rubber bands around it and I just put some again high flow turquoise on the some of the rubber band area and I'm just rolling that onto the paper letting it blend the paper is very wet and I'm just letting it do its thing some of the areas where there's more puddles it's going to blend out more other where there's no water it's just going to um, make marks that is a stamp that I made and I'll put the materials below and I'll link a link to where some of these tools are and even a video where I made stamps. But I make my own stamps so that I can have my own mark in my paintings. So this is a stamp I made. You'll see me add a couple different stamps that I, I love of different shapes. There I'm dabbing up some of the water and I love how it just get, it brings it down to the base, but still some of that dirty water look underneath. I, I just love that look. Now I just turn the paper around um, just to get a different 
view of the painting. I do that a lot, even on my very large paintings. I, you know, I don't create a painting to, to go one particular way. Sometimes it blends itself to end that way. There I'm making tracks and steps. Steps in my life are very um, spiritual to me in a way. And that's made from a pie, like a thing that you use to roll out pie dough. And then I just added neophrome and cutouts uh, and stuck them onto the, the, the pie roller. And I'm looking there, I have a, um, uh, what do you call that? A sponge, just one of those sponges that I put a big stick on. And I just added some um, titanium white high flow stamping into the paint, letting it blend into the already wet paint. There's another stamp I made with my uh, tools. Again, I'll link below where you can find how to make those stamps. And this one, I initially did it with the titanium white high flow, and then I wanted a more of a print because eventually that's in the wet, it was going to kind of like mute down more, which is okay, because I never know how the end product is. So I added some more of the golden heavier paint onto the stamp, and I wanted that to be more of a presence. Anything that is circular or spiral is again a spiritual um, entity for me, and I add uh, the infinity or spirals in just about all pieces of my art. So once again, I'm just putting it in different places. Sometimes it shows up as a slight shadow. Sometimes it blends with the other colors, and you can just barely see a hint of the spiral. So I'm looking at the painting scene. What does it want? I could have stopped here. I could have stopped here and it could have got in a mat and then framed and um, I could look beautiful in a bedroom or a living room or just wherever it would want to be. But um, I wanted to add more. I just felt like inside it needed more. So I grabbed um, uh, a paintbrush. I did not make that paintbrush. So um, I have to take back that every mark was made by something I made, but this, um, the marks are made by me. And I'm just going in and adding color where I feel it needs a spot of color. Turning the painting around again. I'm looking at the fact that I have all different shapes. I have uh, round shapes. I have odd shapes. I have square triangular so I'm adding line with that um, like Indian yellow that's a grease pencil and I'm just scribbling um, you see that I'm just actually letting the grease pencil guide me as to where it goes I love scribbles I love graffiti which is kind of like a writing I love scribbles and um, a lot of times I'll just leave the scribbles as they are then sometimes you know I will hide them um, under an additional layer of paint here and there. There I'm just splattering some of the titanium white high flow. I do that a lot. I love splatters. Um, a lot of my marks are larger so that kind of gave me a way to add um, some smaller looking type dots into the painting. I'm rubbing in some of the paint in different areas so that it's a more organic overall look to painting. And I'm thinking I want to add some ultramarine blue. So I grab some bubble wrap and I just apply some of that ultramarine blue to give it more of a pop. I'm looking at areas where it may be more muted and it might need a pop. I'm looking at the fact that some of that blue looks good next to the yellow. And then I'm adding with my fingers. I do that a lot. There I'm just using the end of that um, long utensil. And, and as you notice, the circles are very much circles. I don't like that because everything else in the painting is kind of like, you know, mudged in. So I go in and I mudge more of that color in. It's totally up to you how you would want your painting to be. I'm using a paper towel or that could be a baby wipe and pulling some of that blue 
make it a, make it into like a sting. Again, this is done very fast on purpose. I take risks in this. I'm not um, being overly cautious. I'm just enjoying what's inside me. And I think that's important to know. Sometimes if you overthink a painting, you're gonna overthink each step you do and you're gonna come, you know, the analysis paralysis. So a lot of times I just go for it. I can always cover it up. There's another uh, of the, um, the uh, that pie roller where I added some of the high flow white. Just adding tracks. You can see that one spot where it was very dark. It was getting kind of dingy down there and it just needed a pop of white. And normally in the end of a painting, oh, there's another stamp. That's stamps of lines. And you'll see me again uh, muting that uh, into the painting a little bit more so it's not so stark of a of a mark but I always end my paintings with white splashes either with a palette knife my fingers a paintbrush I always add circles many paintings I end it very in with a very long plein air brush which is a very very long brush and just add circles of um, some type of mark into my painting. So these are marks that I normally make. These are tools that I made. It's just a homegrown painting. So I hope this gives you some encouragement to get out there and create some uh, paintings yourself with some tools that you've made yourself. I think you'll find that you really enjoy the results. Thank you for watching.